No, I don't. I don't. I don't get into political rants, but I do mention the fact that I do keep track of things a little on online uh, from some conservative uh, news reels. But I don't spend that much time. I don't have the time. But I do. But I do know that when the Bible says that uh, Timothy three says in the last days there will be perilous times, that that's what you're looking at. Okay. If you think this is Andrew Jackson. Abraham Lincoln uh, uh, going on that you're, you're really a, a big time zombie. Okay? Uh, I, think they, I think they destroyed the ecosystem for a lot of water here uh, uh, during the last train crash where they complained that the people who own the company basically said, we're not going to fix the, the, the railroad cars. We're not going to fix them. We will not reduce our salaries, is what they're telling you. It's common sense. I'm not blaming them all the time. I'm just saying that it's common sense that if they get $300 million a piece, what if they got $150 million and they put, an, and they put the other $150 million into the railroad? A chicken can figure out that that means that the ecosystem over there in Ohio wouldn't be damaged. There's a 90% chance that all the people over there are getting sick and the water's no good, the plants are dying, and it's going to affect everybody in this region, uh, in, the, in the, the entire Ohio Valley. I live near the, I, I'm basically an Ohio Valley person. You think we're all spiritual here, and we don't know what's going on, and we're, we're, uh, we're insensitive to what's going on and all this stuff? No. The same thing for uh, abortion and so forth. We're looking for Jesus Christ, but we're, but we're trying to do what we can to stop abortion. That's what most Protestants do, that, that, uh, and I belong to that majority. Okay? Let's go to Matthew 24. This is Jeremiah. This is our second segment on the rapture uh, for this month. Uh, I will probably have the rapture once again this month as we talk about the rapture here. I have Agape over here. Agape is going to be a shorter lesson. I'm only going to hammer a few points on every two weeks on agape. Agape, of course, is a big subject. My goodness, you could talk about agape for two years, nonstop in the Bible. I have a few points on uh, love and God's love, and I'm going to talk about that uh, every two weeks here because that's just about as important as the rapture. Why is that? Because the rapture is love. That's what the rapture is. If God is love and you're going to be with God, that means you're going to be with love. Some of you are getting lost here. Don't get lost. Christianity was based upon you and love getting together. That, that's all it was. It was not about you being healed, getting more money, joining the MAGA crowd, and making America great forever, and you know, having a big house forever or something, uh, you know, with a toilet and so forth. And that, that's not what Christianity is. Okay? We Quakers, we don't have a lot to do with all. I don't have a lot to do with all of this world-loving stuff at all. He who loves the world is an enemy to God. That's what the Bible says. Why? Because the world is basically wicked and greedy. Why would you want to hang around? That's one of the problems with the MAGA crowd or anybody that says, we're going to fix things. Because you're living in a world of delusion. You're not going to fix things. You can make things better, and we're happy you did that. But you're not going to fix things. The Bible says that the power was given to the beast. Common sense tells you if power is given to the beast, then the beast is going to be a very strong presence. No matter what you say, no matter what you do, no matter what you legislate, you know, you're not going to stop 50% of this country being basically wicked, evil people. You're not going to stop it. And the things they do, you're not going to stop. The only way to stop them is to basically kill them. And you can't do that because they're always emerging and being born and developed over these horror movies. I just went to the computer and I went on uh, Hulu or whatever they call it online, which I, I rarely do. And they have like 15 horror channels where people are, are, are torturing each other uh, in live color and high definition. If you think that's not going to affect the people of the world, then you're living in a, you're living in a zombie world. They put two men in a cage, and they beat each other almost to death. 
Okay, if you think that's not going to affect people when that becomes popular, like Sodom and Gomorrah, you're living in a dream world. If you think the MAGA crowd is going to fix all of these TV shows and horror shows and, and all these murderers and all that, you're, you're living in a dream world. It's never going to happen. Make America great again. We're glad that they want to make America great. I, I don't want you to misunderstand me. Uh, don't throw the good stuff out with the bathwater. The, the point is, is that fundamentally you're not going to fix things. And furthermore, the Bible says that God's going to give power to the beast at the end times. That's obviously what's going on. In other words, hell is being enlarged. That's common sense. You're going to fix the devil and, and all of his powers in the United Nations and the Pope. and you know, You're know, you going to stop all kinds of abuse to children. You know, We're going to stop it all. Yeah, no. We're happy that you want to stop all of this. And God will use you. That, that's not uh, uh, the teacher's uh, point here. Okay? It's like going after the bad guy and, and removing the bad guys. In, in Nicaragua, Honduras, or no, El Salvador, they locked up 50,000 gang members, I think. There were 50,000 citizens, or... Uh, who are in El Salvador, who have tattoos all over them, and, and each one of them have probably murdered two or three people. And, and, and they just locked them all up, and they have them in chains. Why would 40, 50,000 people join gangs and murder people? Yeah, that's a lot of people who became murderers. They locked them all up. Now, did, did, did that eliminate crime? No, it did not. It probably took about 70% of the crime away, which means 30% of the crime is still going on in El Salvador, even though you just locked up 40,000 gang members with tattoos all over them and, you know, knives on their shoulders or something. And, you know, the tattoos had blood on and so forth. We're not getting into detail, but it's just that that's, that that's the world, and you locked them all up, and yet there's still 30% crime going on. Now, now as, as a citizen of the world, I'm happy the president of El Salvador locked them up. Good job. Keep them locked up. For the safety of the, the, the women and children and people in El Salvador. He just increased the safety of, of, of children 70% by doing that. But, but did he fix the whole problem? Is, is, are we all fixed now? You know, there's no more earthquake. You, know, no. you can't fix the world. The rapture is fixing the world. That's why we talk about the rapture here every two weeks or so, because that's what's going to fix the world. It's really going to be fixed when you're out of it. That's the point. You know, you, you know, you're out of here, okay? That's it. You're in a cloud. Let's get to the rapture. I was going to listen to Matthew 24. Let's listen to Matthew 24. As I'm going to start adding Matthew 24 and these, these scriptures to the rapture lesson, as, as I become more consummate or expounding, you know, the whole idea of the rapture, okay? In other words, prophecy is very deep. If you want to add everything, uh, you can have 500 hours of teaching. But uh, this ministry, what we do is we, we, we touch on things, okay? And we try to hit the more salient points and, uh, and so forth. And, however, when we get to a regular Bible lesson, uh, sound doctrine, we must cover the basics. And that's why we have Living Bread over here. Living Bread will be spoken here once every two weeks or so, okay? Which is things you need to do, more or less. That's the point. Let's go. And we lost our sound. Hold on. Not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Okay. Let's go. Chapter 24. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the... Let's have a pause. 
Okay, we're back. Let's listen to Matthew 24. Let's go. came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, Start from the top. Chapter 24. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs, and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender, put it forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass, till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch, therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched, and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, 
for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay, there we go. Now, to say that Matthew 24 is, is a rich book uh, chapter is, is an understatement. To go through that chapter properly, and also, there, there are multiple time frames here. Okay? A lot of deja vu and, and all. Uh, the master's going all over the place here in terms of uh, what the Gentiles might go through, what the, what the Hebrews might go through. Uh, before the tribulation period, in the middle of the tribulation period, and it appears to be going all over the place, and I have not given a nice uh, review over this chapter, which I'm going to get into probably in about two weeks. Uh, once again, we will try to finish Matthew this month, and probably Mark. Uh, Romans and Corinthians have, are done as far as work goes. I will be giving out that information this month. Okay. August is where we get probably into Luke and John and the rest of the New Testament. Not the book of Revelation, though. No. Now, we have a couple of references for the future or prophecy. Uh, prophecy is not necessarily considered living bread, so to speak. You don't have to understand Matthew 24 to be saved. Otherwise, it wouldn't be hardly people, hardly anyone saved, especially here in the United States. Okay? Now, it's my job to go through this and put this in order, 24, and then add Luke also. Matthew and Luke give two accounts of the same thing, which is the tribulation period from the Master. Then you have to tie it in with the book of Revelation, and then you have some Ezekiel or something, and Zechariah or something, and you have to add it all together, and, and maybe some of David and so forth, and even all the way back to Enoch or something. All of this is tied in together, and it's a lot of work. To organize it precisely and give a good account as to what's precisely going on right before the tribulation period per se, uh, or the tribulation first first half and the second half. And then there is, of course, the 1,000-year reign of Christ. What happens at the end of the tribulation period? Then the 1,000-year reign of Christ. Then heaven comes down. Uh, New Jerusalem comes down out of heaven and gets planted about the size of Australia or something, a big giant city. And who lives there? Who walks in and out of the gates? Uh, which is the final scenario. So uh, all of this is what I study and what I teach. Now, we backed off of a lot of this prophecy and so forth, uh, uh, all of these future events, because we need to hammer our own basics. Uh, I'm finding out that most people I talk to don't understand basics. So I, I, I assess my Bible study needs uh, based upon the people I meet in the streets and so forth. The people at Bible study and so forth come to Bible study. Uh, we're wasting our time talking about the rapture in general uh, or the future uh, unless we find out what the word grace means. Okay, that's, that's, that's the point. We need to find out what a servant means. The master says, make, um, uh, if you want to be great, learn to be the servant of all. So, so the word servant, what does it mean? Uh, why is it so important to put on a servant mind? Why is that the big issue in Christianity? Why is it the number one issue? It's even a bigger issue than uh, essentially loving God. Because that is the love of God. I mentioned that before. My, my parents taught me that. You know, that, that, that love is active. It doesn't squat around and do nothing. That's, you know, it, you know you, 
you, it's okay to sit around and do nothing and relax and love God. That's not the point. The point is, is that a lot of Christianity, or most of it, is action. That's why, that's why it's called the book of Acts. Because most of Christianity is action. My parents taught me that love gets off, gets, gets off its can. I talk and I talk, talk, talk. Uh, I, I'm, I, I'm an American citizen. I've watched so many commercials where all they do basically is talk on the commercials. It's a lot of talk. I love my hot dog. I love my mustard. I love my car. I, I'll just talk. It's not, I'll just talk. I learned from my parents that action is what we want here. I don't want to talk. I don't want. And, and the thing is that it doesn't mean that you can't relax and love God and basically sit around and do nothing sometimes. That's not the point. We're, we're, we're not, I'm, not, I'm not attacking that at all. I'm just saying that in general, most of the time, we should see action. That's my point. Talk, I'm going to do this, I'm going to learn that, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this. Both of my parents were, especially my, my earth father, he, he, he didn't really like you talking about really anything. If you talk to him, he'd say, don't talk about it, I want you to go do it. That's, that's it. Talk, 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 you know, activity is what we want here. I'm retired now from worldly service, you might say, out in the world and school and teaching and, and did security work with, with the Los Angeles Police Department or something. Uh, that was the last official job I had, uh, working with the US, USC Police Department at University of Southern California. I used to talk with the, with the, with the uh, swing ship, graveyard ship police department because I worked with them unofficially, kind of, or... Uh, we, we uh, and so forth, and in Los Angeles, a horrible town, full of lots of gang members and lots of crime. But here's my point: uh, I'm basically retired from that. But it doesn't mean that that because I'm taking more time doing nothing, that I'm still not active, or, or that's not the right thing to do is to be retired. That that's not the point. My, because the word tire is in the word retire. But listen, here's the point. I want you to get the point here. The point here is that the point here is is that activity is really what's going is really what we is really what we really cherish. That's my point. And this is one reason why a lot of people are confused as to what life is all about. It's kind of like having a, a, a pet dog and cat, and all they do is snuggle and hang around. Well, that, 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 that might be nice to, 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 uh, to have affection with animals. Uh, I come from an animal family. Uh, I have a brother who has every animal and a peacock in his backyard. Here's my point. My point is, is that animals are wonderful, but what you really need is something that does something for you. That's the bottom line. That's, and, and no matter how you talk and flap your jaws, what you really need in life is something or someone's going to do something for your benefit. Not just sit there and stare at you. That's my point. You, you need something, someone that's actively going to do things that help your situation. And the person that just sits around and smiles at you, it, it, you, you can appreciate them, but, but, but they're not getting anything done. Now, now, now they're providing emotional support and, and stuff like that, and I'm not putting that down. I, I want to make, make a point here, that, that what you really need in your life, big time, is some actual boots-on-the-ground help. That's what you, you need a lot of it. Okay? That's my point. K 
cats to sit around and snuggle and go in the window and all that. Uh, okay, uh, I've had so many cats, I can't even tell you how many cats we've had uh, uh, growing up. It must have been a million. Listen, I have nothing against animals. No, that's not my point. My point is, is, that, is that what you need is practical participation in love activities. That's what you need. Sitting around feeling fuzzy can be okay, but that's not necessarily what you need. To be a satisfied human, you're supposed to join a church and support human beings to, in, in their plight in the world. That, that's one of the main things you were made for. And without you participating and being part of a love help team, you, you'll never be what you need to be is my point. You'll always be a shadow of what you should have been. You can go to Starbucks, enjoy coffee, smile at people, go home, hug your cat or something, or whatever you do with your life. Uh, you, you, you enjoy movies, and you know you, you, you plant plants, and you watch them grow or something, and, and that's your whole life. And a lot of people do that. And, and they think that they're living a full life. They're not, because until you support Christian people, boots on the ground, you'll never be a satisfied person. You, you can pretend you're happy, but you'll never be happy. Until you join the love team and participate and get into the blood and the sweat and tears of making the world better on, 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 a, on, a, on a grassroots level in the church. You, 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 it'll never happen. I talk to people all the time. They're on that roller coaster. I'll talk to them and they'll tell me, yeah, I'm doing fine right now, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they'll tell me, yeah, uh, I got a cat, I got a dog and a car and I got, you know, uh, I, I have a... Um, uh, you know, a hobby, you know, and we, you know, and I, and I say, you, 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 you're not, you're not supporting the church at all? You don't have a schedule of Bible study? You don't, you don't participate in helping the elderly at the church? You don't, okay, it doesn't sound good, and then, then you tell me that you're doing fine, and I'm going to tell you that you're not doing fine, and that you're just living a life of, uh, I don't know what you would call it. It's almost like an animal life. You, you don't really know God. You don't have the, the, the love of God in your heart. And you're a shallow person no matter what you say and no matter what you do. And then when you call me two months later and tell me that you're angry, you're bitter, you're unhappy, well, what did you plant? If you plant weeds, you're going to get weeds. If you plant uh, Christian activities uh, of supporting the church and, and loving the loving the fatherless and taking time for human beings, etc., then then we can talk. Okay, that's the point. Otherwise, otherwise you, you're just running your mouth and you're not going anywhere. You're, you're the little rat in the cage. And you, all you're doing when you do things, you know, going to Starbucks, whatever, you know, improperly clothed. All you're doing is spinning your wheel in the rat cage. I see women with, with clothes on and inappropriate going to Starbucks, or, or men with tank tops and muscles and all this stuff, and you know, and, and, and they're walking proud and so forth. Okay, these are people who are in the rodent cage. They're spinning, but they're not in, they're not really no they don't know what real joy is. That's my point. Now it's my job to take people who are living in this lifestyle and to bring them into the church. And those who are in the, in the church, it's my job to cultivate uh, what they're doing and to tell them to keep going. That's all we do here. You know, the Protestant people who are Quakers who are, who are doing their job, dressing properly, they're, they're living the narrow path, it's my job to tell them, stay right where you are. That, that's what we do here. We have two primary goals here pertaining to humans. That, that's what we have. It's very simple. We're here to grab the plastic people and pull them away from their plastic life. And no matter how many times they tell me they're doing fine, they're lying. They're not doing fine. They're on a roller coaster of satisfaction. And, you, 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 and blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for you shall be satisfied. 
Okay? Let's get back to the rapture. We looked at Matthew 24, which is very complicated. Uh, Matthew 24 is one of those chapters that uh, it takes two years to go through. And really explain what the Master is doing. He gave you one chapter, and he's giving you a lot of work. Kindergarten's over with, with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's over. Say goodbye to the first grade. It's time to get out pen and paper. It's time to get out multiple subjects. It's time, it's time to get a dictionary out. It's time to go to work. I'm not going into Matthew 24 right now. Uh, as far as prophecy goes, I've decided to, to stop all prophecy lessons until the end of this year. And my prophecy lesson is over here. Okay? That's uh, 16 in this ministry on, on the on the 52 plus uh, playlist we have available at this channel. We have 52 plus channels, uh, pardon me, 52 plus playlists on this channel, excuse me. And, and we have, each one of them is a separate subject, more or less. And 16 is prophecy. I already have some prophecy up there, and I have another prophecy lesson over here, uh, which is a lot of work. I just finished Genesis. There's a lot of points of prophecy in Genesis, so I'm going to go through all 66 books and give you some lessons on prophecy, which will be under number 16. Okay? A lot going on around here. Obviously, Matthew 24 is heavy prophecy. Uh, most of what you're probably reading in Matthew 24 is tribulation period stuff. It's not for we Christians who are in the rapture in the cloud with Jesus Christ. It doesn't pertain to you. It's basically for Jacob, who didn't receive Jesus Christ. Just like all the references to Titus coming to town. The master said, don't weep for me, weep for your children, because in 30 years, most of you will be alive, and Titus is going to come from Rome. He's going to wipe out most of you. It's going to be horrible. Why is he coming? Because you didn't basically receive Jesus Christ. That's why, it's, that's why it's happening. Same thing here. The people who aren't paying attention, who are going to go through seven years. I'm not going to go into that right now. I want to get to the rapture of Germain right now. There's too many subjects here in Matthew 24. And uh, when I give you a Matthew 24 lesson, I will uh, put probably Luke in there too. Both of these gentlemen have an account of the end of the world and so forth, seven years. And they have different contributions. Some people think one is for Hebrews and one is for Gentiles. Uh, I might go along with that, but once again, it's very complicated, okay? I will make that a part of prophecy. As a matter of fact, um, most of the prophecy, I have to do a lot of work on those two chapters, or those two segments of your, of your New Testament from the Master. The Master really gives you a lot of information pertaining to the seven years, what's going to happen. And then if you add Revelation chapter 7, 8, 9, and so forth, you're, you're going to get more all the way to